for the opportunity. Right over speaker, I rise to remind the chair about the undertaking you made to this house while we were to close off for Easter holiday. You had undertook that we shall have opportunity to debate on the issue of the parliamentary exhibitions wherein members read about the profligacy of the commission of this house whereupon the allegations about the handshake to the commissioners was debated where about the backbench commissioners were given money ranging from 400 million to 500 and you undertook right over speaker that an opportunity would be availed to us to have this matter thoroughly debated concluded and put to rest right over speaker there is an order from Right, Robert, the honorable colleague is well aware that right now Parliament is too busy with the budget. And we need not to divert because the time that we have on the ground is so thin. Is it in order for the member not to trust the chair? We already give, we gave you assurance that we are ready as a Parliament to proceed well, to disturb the House when we are proceeding with the budget in a tight condition. Is it in order? Additional. I'm uh, supplementing on your order. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that, so that, so that the, so that the, the, the speaker rules on the matter at once. Right on the speaker and honorable colleagues, even when, before I joined the parliament, <laughs> It, it is unheard of. It's alien. Even uh, before I joined the parliament, I don't. Is it, is it has it been a culture that parliament will discuss everything that comes in papers? Now, if that is the trend. Honorable Sechikuba is my neighbor. His constituency immediately borders mine. On a daily or weekly, I have had news on our local radios talking about Honorable Sechikuba to be a land grabber and to be facilitating land grabbing. I have never taken it as an issue, and yet his involvement at whatever level affects the reputation of this parliament being that he's a member of parliament. I have never thought that what you pick on the media becomes an issue for debate <laughs> and discussion. Is it therefore in order for Honorable Sech Kubo, who knows that he has been repeatedly accused for grabbing land, evicting people, there are cases of murder reported at police involving his name. Parliament has never discussed that. Is in order. To think that he should keep under the carpet and then other issues should be thrown out of air is in order. Honorable ma'am, by the time I leave my house very early in the morning, I have come for serious business. Next item. Right item three. Right honorable speaker. Uh -uh. Right honorable speaker. Let's first dispose of some MPSs. Next item. Item three. Right honorable speaker. I have said next item. Speaker. Motion for adoption of reports of the following sectoral committees on the ministerial policy statement and budget estimates for the financial year 2024-25. Item three one, the Committee on Foreign Affairs. Honorable members, 
This morning, the House proceeded with the consideration of the sectoral committees, reports on the ministerial statements, pursuant to Rule 149 of the Rules of Procedure. As I guided in my communication, I expect the presenters, I expect Honorable Sech Kubo. Madam, Madam Speaker. Honorable Sech Kubo. Honorable Aliek. Aliek. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, you have already made us to proceed with the next item. And in your wisdom, Right Honorable Speaker, you have already seen that what has been brought in front of you by Honorable Seki Kubo cannot be discussed now in this parliament. Right Honorable Speaker, you have already ruled it and you are you are already making us proceed with the next item. So is Honorable Seki Kubo in order to take us back when we are really discussing very, very important issues on the floor of Parliament? Right, Honorable Speaker. And he's ordering you, right, Honorable Speaker. And when you are speaking, he's also speaking, and he has got stuck on the microphone, right, Honorable Speaker. Is he in order? He does not respect your chair, right, Honorable. Love. Honorable members, I am the one who said I will give time for that discussion. And I have said I will give time. I have very important issues that are statutory in nature to be handled. So if you don't respect the chair, if you don't respect the chair, Honorable Sech Kubo. Honorable Sech Kubo. Unless if we have more than one speaker in this house. Much as I try to be patient, don't touch the wrong side. I have said, I have actually said, I have not even allowed the issue of uh, accommodated the issue of safety of land because I, it, it is a hearsay. Eh? Uh -uh. Honorable Bua, your, 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 star, your member. You first proceed. You first proceed. First proceed. No, first proceed. Honorable member, I want to refer you to Rule 2024 on the contempt of Parliament. Chairperson, Foreign Affairs. Right, Honorable right, Speaker. Can I hear from the law? Can I hear from the law? Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I'm, I'm raising a point of procedure which I think will help to guide. I did raise this issue here on the floor regarding uh, the public outcry on the expenditures by Parliament and uh, the Commission. And one of the 
prayers I was making at the time that I did make was that Parliament comes out to explain properly and formally, because it's important that we be accountable to the people. We are a people-centered Parliament. And that's one of the asks that I did make. And uh, I think it's following up to say, can that get to happen? And maybe you can guide, right, Honorable Speaker, when that guidance can get to happen, when the public can be explained to by the people-centered parliament, so that it doesn't get to appear as if we don't want to be accountable or we want to push things under the carpet, an explanation to the public for which we speak here in parliament about those expenditures. So I procedurally ask that um, you guide when that can happen, because it will settle many things also get to explain to the people out there that this is what happened and this is our formal explanation so, so that it is also not rumours because what's been happening is some people come out to speak on behalf of parliament maybe with inadequate information and so it throws a lot more confusion out there. So would it not be procedurally right that parliament formally comes out to explain all these issues so that the public is settled and they get to know, okay, so this is what happened Maybe if there's a supplementary question from the public, jo they get explained too. Thank jo you, Madam. Joel, Joel, I told you, I wrote you that we'll have a meeting end of June. And we'll do that. And on the issue of land grabbing or whichever, you'll come with a personal statement that should be given out. You speak whatever nonsense you want to speak. Yeah, I have sins, I can assure you. You speak. No, I have sins. There's no doubt about that. Chair, when uh, a and member... And is the person you're speaking to? When a member rises to tarnish the only asset I have in life, my reputation on the floor of this house, and you are presiding over, and you don't call a member to substantiate, you first, uh, first where are we that I will search who will first wait? The person who raised the issue, where is the person? Because I want, I want, I want him to be here when you're responding. Where is, where is honorable commotion? Because honorable search, Kubo. You're better off responding to that when sure. Honorable who? No, no, no. It, it, Kimosho it, it. is inside. Um, right, Honorable Speaker, the matter is unanswered and it was meant to stifle my contribution about a very serious matter of the Commission and the handshake. And you allowed the member to blatantly come and destroy the only asset I have in life, my reputation. If he so wishes that he was on the right, is this, plat is this parliament a platform for people to come and kill people's reputation? And they run away, and thereafter they claim they are not in the house. Right, Honorable Speaker? O on top of expanding it from the Hansard, it is the right and proper case to be referred to the disciplinary committee so that he can go there I don't want to gag him if he has this very information, important information. Let him go to the disciplinary committee and appear because he has used the platform of this very house to slur and kill the, try to kill the image of a member of parliament. But number two, it was meant to scuttle me from continuing with demanding for accountability. Right to level speaker, I will not rest until accountability is given to this house. I needed the commission as they are here seated. To tell us where they got the money, the 400 million, it is a ploy by the likes of the MP Kazo. Kazo had produced very brilliant MPs. I've never seen someone being used as a hatchet man. But now we have the, the commissioners here with us. I don't want to be diverted from my initial point. Can Right Honorable Speaker give us the time and date here and now for the commissioners to explain this house where they got the 400 million? Where they put it? Who voted it? We are the, on the question of accountability, and they want to scatter the debate over that. Yes, there are important issues we have to deal with, but the moment we don't plug the loopholes, the moment we allow the public funds to be wasted and shared, 
in broad daylight and, and, and blatantly, right, Honorable Speaker, there is a big problem. I'll take the information. Uh, uh, there's a procedural matter from. Uh, no, 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 I have given the information. I mean, whip. Procedure, procedure. Parliament is a house of record, and Parliament is guided by its own rules of procedure. Is it procedurally correct for this house to be turned into a house of debating news in the social media? Is it procedurally correct under our rules of procedure? That I accuse Odur, Honorable Odur, he counter-accuses me, Honorable and the Odur. house is turned into discussing our accusations from Lango sub-region as my neighbor. Because he's my neighbor also in the constituency. Honorable Are we proceeding Odur, right? Honorable Odur, Jonah. <laughs> Honorable last time that we will not entertain matters on social media, on rumors. And, and if we are going to continue doing that, then you'll be debating everything. You'll be debating everything in this house. Yes. Honorable members, John, are you first? It. I want to beg your indulgence. I have already explained myself of what we have ahead of us. We have a statutory deadline. The deadline of all this is tomorrow. We have over 18 MPSs before us here. We have to live here and go and handle this. Jonah, please allow me to have only one day you come. One, one report, uh, uh, foreign affairs. Jonah, you, uh, me and Jonah, we always agree. Uh, Jonah, you said. Right, right Honorable Speaker. But, 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 but what is wrong? Honorable, we have agreed the member should be here. He is calling. Huh? Who is going to expand it? Okay. No. Let the member himself expand, not you. No. Hmm? You know what amuses me? When they talk about other people on social media, it is not painful. Now when they talk about others... <laughs> yes, Jonah. Uh, thank of course, the allegations that were made by our colleague from Kazo uh, require to be substantiated. Some of them are so serious because he mentioned that murders have taken place. And you know there are many Ugandans who have been killed and uh, the, the suspects have not yet been uh, apprehended. There are also others who have simply gone missing and all that has been mentioned about our colleague. In the absence of uh, a substantiation from the Honorable Member who made the allegation, and by precedent that has been set in this house, that such statements cannot be allowed to hang without being explained. Madam Speaker, the only way forward we would have is either one, you give the member who made the allegation to come and substantiate with evidence, okay. or in the alternative, under Rule 229, I believe, that entire uh, record is expunged. Yeah. Second, uh, sec uh, 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 honorable members, we will have to expand, including what Honorable Sechkuba said. Or we, 
will have honorable of Kazo. Come and what? So we will, will, will tell the honorable Kazo. Switch on. I wanted to add as well that the Honorable Sechi Kubo equally makes allegations, and before that can be expunged, he can also be provided with opportunity to explain. However, on my side, Madam Speaker, on my side, I earlier on initiated and indicated that I have issues that I want to raise. I want to be on the record. The issues that I wanted to raise, I have not picked them from social media. And I've not yet even communicated them out. Uh, and I've I'm, told you, I, I, I advise you to but, write. But I'm waiting for opportunity to come and put that on record because it also touches, for example, the issue of human resources in this house. I want to know how staff are in, recruited. I want to know how they are promoted. I also want to know how they are enumerated so that the public can be assured. Because Parliament is not uh, an exception to the rules. Honorable members, we will wait for Honorable Kimosho to come and substantiate on, uh, on what he said, on the allegation that he put forth, and then we uh, will take an action. We will take an action on what he has said. If it is, uh, it is, it is wrong, we will take an action on that. Uh, 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 I was still on the floor. Yes, I was, and the rules of debate requires that when a member mentions order, I sit down. Me, I'm civil. And Honorable Ekanya is the one who had raised the point of order, so I yielded the floor for I him to, an order for him to raise Ekanya. the point of order. I didn't hear. I didn't. <laughs> oh, ah. Uh, uh, chair, 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 foreign affairs. Each committee has 15 minutes. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, I uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to present a report on the policy statements for vote 006, uh, which is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, headquarters, and votes 501 to 538, uh, representing the 38 ministers. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, before I delve into the detail, uh, may I uh, lay on table uh, Honorable the Honorable members, can I have some size hired guns? Madam Speaker, regarding the presentation of policy statements, Madam yeah. Speaker, the public my, finance. My, my, my way, you protect me from a door. <laughs> Madam Speaker, the Public Finance Management Act requires the minister responsible for finance when laying the budget to fulfill a number of conditions. The minister for finance brought here draft estimates that gives the total budget as 60 yes the draft estimates the minister presented here 
give the total budget as 60.4 trillion. The same minister, the Honorable Musa Sizi, while appearing before the budget committee, while appearing before the budget committee, in his written statement, he said the budget is 58 trillion. The policy statement, which is the procedural issue I am raising, that are about to be presented, when you add them, they present a different total of the budget. Section 13. Section 13 C in particular says a statement of budget signed by the Minister and the Secretary to the Treasury must be also presented. This is what this statement must read like. It must be attesting to the reliability and the completeness of the information provided under this section and the conformity of the information to the Charter for Fiscal Responsibility. The law here says a statement must be brought here by the Minister, signed by him and the Secretary to the Treasury, attesting to the reliability and the completeness of the information that the Minister is giving together with the budget. So the procedure issue I am raising, Madam Speaker, the policy statement, when you add the figures there, they give you a different budget. The draft estimate by the same minister give a different budget. His statement to the budget committee gives a different budget. Before we begin processing policy statements, Madam Speaker, I invite you to guide the Parliament in respect of this section, whether we will be proceeding right to begin dealing with information that violates Section 13C of the Public Finance Management Act. Thank you. Uh, Honorable that accompany the budget we laid on 27th March when you were in Mecca. Now I want to welcome you back from Mecca. Two, on the issues of the figures of the policy, ministerial policy statement, the draft budget, these policy statements are, are going to be referred to the budget committee. And in the budget committee, the budget committee is supposed to do reconciliation, the harmonization, and then the consolidation of these figures. That's why we are looking at policy statement by policy statement, and we refer them for harmonization. Yes, uh, Commissioner? Commissioner? I wanted to argument Partly the challenge the Honorable Sumiju and the Shadow Minister of Finance is uh, finding. Be because he has um, a problem with uh, the three documents received. One, the MPS, which has uh, 60 trillion, 60 point something. Then the budget estimates uh, with 58. And of course, the appropriation bill, which is the third document. But a few days ago, the Minister of Finance outed a corrigenda. Um, which is cutting votes to vote 130, debt servicing. And this, that is disfiguring the entirety of the MPSs. And I think that's the basis for the Honorable Assembly asking that question. Secondly, right Honorable Speaker, and related, is the fact that um, the Committee of Finance, which is handling very key issues relating to um, the revenue side of the budget, and I think this has always been the, the bit of a challenge that um, the Committee on Finance reports on uh, the, the votes themselves and then the revenue. 
the revenue side of the revenue reporting side is not been as intense. And that I think disfigures the way members of parliament view the entire budget. I don't know how and how much time um, this Comptor of Finance is going to have to report on the revenue side of the budget because we seem to be concentrating on expenditure and then forget the revenue side. So the Honorable Sambiju has a point when he finds the problem in reconciling. Um, I, I agree that the Budget Committee will, will try to harmonize. But then these committees are left hanging as whether they did a good job or actually their job was only partly done. And how much time the Budget Committee will have to make all the entire reconciliation of this voice right on the speaker. I thought I should augment his challenge because I also found a bit of that challenge. When I have the three documents, the MPS, the budget estimates, the, uh, the bill itself, and then eventually the code agenda, right on the speaker. And Madam Speaker, if you can allow me, that has vote, all the votes. Vote 130 is missing. 131 is missing. Yet the law on public finance speaks about completeness of information, completeness, and says, shall, completeness. The minister actually is supposed to bring here a statement to, to attest to the completeness of the information he's giving parliament. So he can't keep walking here like he's walking to, to milk cows. He brings one car document, he throws it there. Then he goes back, he brings another, he throws it there. Then he walks back. The law requires him to bring a state on completeness of information you are having in Parliament before we undertake this process of, 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 of policy statement consideration. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I do appreciate the concerns Honorable Semuj is having and all other colleagues in this house who are involved with us in the budget process. However, Madam Speaker, I wish to allay the fears some of our colleagues have. The only problem is that we want to conclude from the beginning. We should uh, work through the process, and then at the end of the day, we shall harmonize, as the speaker has said, and come up with the exact resource envelope, which will agree with the expenditure. Madam Speaker, it is true in the estimates we presented a resource envelope of 60.4, and it is also true that what Cabinet approved was 58.3 trillion as a resource envelope. And it is also true that we have corrected the errors or revised some of these figures using the agenda. Madam Speaker, I was talking to the Shadow Minister this morning that all this will eventually get to the Budget Committee. We shall do the harmonization. We shall do the reconciliations and come back to supply when all the figures are all right. So I want to really ask colleagues. To process budget uh, policy statements that also contain figures. This parliament will be making decisions today. They present foreign affairs, we make a decision. Yet, in the three documents that you have presented, the figures are completely different. So you mean this morning we should be wasting time approving figures that are not there? Madam Speaker and colleagues, what we are doing today, Honourable we, are going to to, we are going to debate the policy statements and make recommendations, which will go to the Budget Committee. The final decision on the budget will be taken by this House at supply and appropriation. So whatever we are doing now is facilitating the process. 
question of the Honorable Minister. And I know the challenge the Honorable Minister might be facing. But Honorable Minister, uh, through Madam Speaker, this parliament wants to help you. Because when we created the National Planning Authority, we created it to support the entire process so that the planning uh, cycle is complete. Government departments, they come up with ministerial policy statement. It contains expenditure plan. It has procurement plan and timeline. They have activity plan. And this is digested by the various uh, committees of parliament. If cabinet approves a budget of 58, policy statement combines has a budget of 62, we are going to pass the finance bill and some of these expenditure are multi-year expenditure. You are indirectly through Madam Speaker, the minister is directly disempowering parliament by not bringing all the documents at the same time. And this creates laziness, Madam Speaker, among the technical people. Honor and really, yes, Madam Speaker. Honorable members, I want to suggest let's get the APSs. We make our input. You go and harmonize. Since all of you, the chairpersons of different committees, are members of the budget committee, you go and harmonize, reconcile, and then consider and come up with a figure. We will not pass a figure that has not come from you people. So for now, let's first receive the NPSs, give our, our comments, and see how we improve it better.